Hey peoples, this is the second in a series called Docs on the Fly. Mm -hmm. It's a cool November day in the valley, and we are just being with <laughs> Eric Dosh. Okay, so we're going to go over and open up the hive. They actually take tree sap and make this really sticky propolis. The bees made that. The bees make it, yep. They glue everything together. Their whole way to keep the hive intact is just glue everything together. You can see quite a bit of bees on both sides. I'm guessing there's probably in the neighborhood of 15,000 probably at this point. Now you can tell that the main body of bees is right here. So that probably means that the queen is right in here. That's where the main body of the actual hive and the brood, the babies, you know, that they're raising the baby bees. The very youngest ones will build the comb before they really can fly and whatever. They're the ones that tend to build up all the comb and all that, the honeycomb. Then as they get older, they'll go out and, and be foragers. Then when they can't, they'll either be guard bees or attendants to the queen or whatever. So, so through their life cycle, depending sort of on their health and how good they can fly, they actually have them doing different things. Apparently. And the life cycle is about? Uh, I think they live about 40, 45 to 90 days, somewhere in there. Individually, you know, each one of these guys is not all that smart. Together, it's almost like a human brain. They have this collective consciousness. It's just, it's a colony. You know, they, they have a group collection, and if you're dying, very cold calculus to, for the survival of the hive, you're out. You're not helping. They kick you out the door. This is a feeder that we have on this end to help them out, especially during the winter when there's no nectar flowing. We put sugar water in here, actually. And they use it both as a water source and as a, as a nutrient. This is basically honey down here. You can see they're getting a little more excited because we're getting more into the core of the hive now. So you can tell they're a little more active, a little more defensive. Still haven't seen our queen. There she is, right there. She has a red dot on her, so she's easy to see. But she's also bigger. Notice how she's bigger and fatter than the rest of them. Everybody gets out of her way. Yep, she's, she's the boss. And there will be bees that do nothing but just tend to her. They feed her, they take care of her. Her main purpose is to lay eggs, and she'll lay thousands a day, like clockwork. And they're actually pretty calm for having ripped their entire home apart, you know, taking a look at all the pieces. They'll let you know if they, if they feel threatened. Mm -hmm. Like, if I just sort of bang a little bit on here, like if there's an animal who's trying to get in, if I kind of come in and bang on this a little bit. Or... So that's, that's one reason why I don't want to be nailing the lids on and I put these latches on because when you're re-nailing the lids back on, it does that kind of a disturbance to them. So this is a much more gentle way and it works great and it's easy to take them on and off. We're trying to plant plants in here that will blossom over the winter or all the season round so they have different things blossoming at different times of the year so they can still collect pollen hopefully get some nectar, kind of keep them going. Our agriculture is not helping them out. If you think about the statistic that something like 85% of our food chain is pollinated by bees, if all of the hives collapsed, our food supply would be in trouble, flat out. We would, we would, we would be in trouble. So just from a sheer, let's pollinate all the plants and, and keep the planet healthy, you know, more people need to to have these around, you know, and not just the commercial bee keepers. I think they just need to be a little bit everywhere. So I mean, we're trying to help the whole ecosystem here, our garden, everybody's garden, everywhere around here. I mean, we just need this for our ecosystem. I mean, there's a certain amount of pollination that goes on by butterflies or by the wind, but the majority of it is these little guys pollinating all the food that we eat. So we got to take care of them. So this is Stevie, just being with Eric Dosh. Reminding you that you too are a walking documentarian, so go pick up that smartphone and help spread awareness.